In this video, we're going to be kicking up some dust and showing you how you can replace the blower motor in the furnace in your RV. So, stay tuned. Here we have the furnace in uh, our 1986 Fleetwood. Uh, I believe this is a, it's a wilderness, but it's a, a special thing called a Cimarron. But from what I've researched, most of the uh, mid to late 80s um, RVs, campers, and uh, travel trailers have this style of furnace. Um, this particular model is a 6531. They have a 6531-1, dash dash two, dash three. Um, all three of those look like they're basically the same. So the step-by-step -step process is probably gonna be pretty close to what yours is. So I went ahead and ordered a new motor for it. Now this here is the Original part number PF 232 225QZ. <coughs> Actually, this is the uh, this here's the part number for the replacement motor. The uh, motor itself, uh, the company that made the original motor no longer exists, so I had to do some research, figure out which motor is its replacement. And then when we get in there, we'll look at the part number on that motor I can't remember it off the top of my head and if I can figure it out I did buy the motor off of eBay but if I can figure out exactly where it came from like the company the part number well obviously that's the part number now but the uh, company I'll I'll post a link down in the description so others can find it and figure out if that's exactly what they need or not. The website, you know, like I said, it was just eBay, so I'll have to figure that one out. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is open up the door, the main access door, get that out of the way. And then, before you actually dig into here, I'm going to say it's a really good idea um, turn off the, all the propane at the bottles. You know, just turn both off if you have two of them. You know, obviously, if you just have one, turn the one off. And um, disconnect the battery, just in case. <coughs> and then the second thing you do is slide this little pin back. Go ahead and open it up. And then you disconnect the igniter wire. It's kind of like a spark plug wire. And from the igniter box, I'll plug the main wiring harness from it and go ahead and put this aside. Uh, kind of a neat little reference, there's a little wiring diagram. Now I've already had the luxury of pulling this apart once. Not only to uh, find out the part number that's on the motor, but I actually cleaned the motor out. Because it was screeching and howling and you know, not working all that well. So went ahead and did that and so I already know how all this is going to come apart right, so the next thing you do is I'm going to go ahead with a little wing nut here see if you can even see that I'm just going to be grabbing the camera and getting it up close to some of these things okay, you have this wing nut here you need to loosen that up and that'll get rid of this shroud. So you loosen this shroud so you can pull it out. So I'll go ahead and do that. And so I am going to recommend over on 
from this side there's the main propane inlet now if you listen to me before you already have all the propane turned off so go ahead and disconnect that and kind of push it off to the side and that'll allow you to take all this all the, uh, the switches and the solenoids just this whole thing will come out and be able to get that out of the way for me what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be disconnecting here and here for the propane Actually, not even going to disconnect this side here, but I did move the shroud out of the way so I can gain access to the, the fan that's in there. We call it a wheel or squirrel cage. So, I'll go ahead and start disconnecting this wire here. This is the breaker, so if your furnace ever stops working, like the fan never stops working this is the first thing you check and then you just reset it by pushing that in so first thing but there's two screws over here clear in the back I'll get my flashlight out here and right there's a screw and there would be a screw right there at the top but uh, I drop that back down over in there somewhere. So you remove those two screws, which I will go ahead and do now. Now I don't have a really long screwdriver to reach back there, so I just got a, a quarter inch socket and a long extension and I put the half in or the flathead screwdriver a bit in there. Magnet, very handy. And I'm going to disconnect the propane right here. And whenever you disconnect these, I've already sprayed it once with WD-40 just to help loosen it up. But you always have to have one wrench on the main part or on the uh, on one side of it to hold it steady while you loosen up the other part. If not, there is a possibility you can twist that and obviously cause a breakage, cause a crack in there. You just hold this one steady, you slowly put a little bit more pressure on it until it breaks loose. And after a couple of turns, you can go ahead and get rid of that one wrench. So you can just kind of pull that out and if you disconnected this propane line this whole thing would just come out but I did not so just kind of push this off to the side and the next thing we need to do move four screws the flathead or um, quarter inch socket two up there two down here this cover will just come right out and there's a the fan wheel now in here get to the right position <coughs> in here you can see maybe I'm hoping you can there we go. There's a little Allen, a uh, little set screw right in there that holds the the wheel itself to the motor. Um, 
don't need to worry about getting that out. I'm going to go ahead and unplug these connections from the motor itself since I'm here. But there is one of these set screws over on this side. There's a little access door. Um, if you want to make easier access to everything, you can take this piece off here, which consists of that screw. And there's a screw right there, up there, and then right there. You disconnect those three, and then disconnect those two wires. Be sure you remember where the uh, orientation is, because one of them is the sensor to make sure it's lit, and the other one is the igniter. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that, because like I said, I've already had this part. <coughs> to loosen these set screws, you need a 1 8 inch, I can get it to focus, you can't really see that, but 1 8 inch. Um, hex, now one eighth inch hex key, uh, fairly long, but you need to make sure that it's lined up. So I think you can see that in there. And you insert that into that hole. And there we go. And then just twist counterclockwise. I just do, you know, three, four, five turns. You don't need to take that set screw all the way out. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to take the clamp off, which is that screw right there. Now, the new one did come with the clamp. But I'm going to see if the new one will fit without having to replace the clamp. Let's see here. Here's the new clamp. Looks almost exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and see if it'll go in without replacing the clamp. Just a Phillips head screwdriver, a Phillips head screw. Go ahead and remove the grounding wire. There's the screw needs to come all the way out. Just take this piece. Just bend it all the way down. out of the way and then the motor's loose and be able to bring it out. And there you have it. Alright, now that I have it out, I have this little notch here. Take your Allen key, put it in there, loosen that one up too the turns and there's your motor right there right, and I said I'd show you the tell you the original part number now in this one here's the connector and it's stamped in here and the original number is PF 23136Q and it's made by a company called uh, Redmond, which, like I said, no longer exists. Um, you see this motor is kind of beat up. Like I said, I already had this thing apart. Um, this thing was chock full of dust from the brushes themselves. So I pulled it apart, cleaned it, and it worked okay. So we're actually going to keep a hold of this and uh, use it as a spare, just in case. Maybe somebody else would want it. Needs it for theirs. So, that being said, we have the new motor. Same size. Same 
diameter. The only difference is I'm seeing. Yeah. This shaft is quite a bit longer. So it may cause an issue. I'll have a look when I get it in there. We'll get the uh, get this thing on here, set it in there, see what it looks like. Now I can already see that it went down past this little flat spot where the set screw rests. So I need to pull it up a little bit. Ooh, sun's coming out for a few seconds. Do that just barely snug. Push the rest of the way down. Tighten it. And now I'm going to see if it'll fit. If not, I'm going to have to do something with that. Fit. So we shall see. tell that it's too long. Sticks out about a quarter inch. Now it may not cause a problem. I may go ahead and just clamp it down just to see what it looks like. Alright so what I ended up doing is I just loosened up that set screw, positioned it where it needed to be, and I used some uh, some medium strength Loctite on it and just tighten it down really well, tighten the set screw down really well. And now we'll go ahead and just finish putting it back together. So I'm trying to position these wires so that they'll go through the hole that they need to be. Go ahead and replace it. So now that I've realized that, we're going to go ahead and remove these four screws that I pointed out over here. And we're going to disconnect this propane line as well. Head screws. Oops, head screws. Of course, I cannot get to. Oh. 
So, got this out, and we see another difference. So, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to have to just cut this or notch this or break this in order to make room for those wires. Because obviously, this just isn't the right part altogether. camera ended up uh, filling up on the memory card and it started to rain so finish the rest of this up without recording it but um, basically just reverse the process when putting it back together uh, works great now uh, if you like what you see and want to know more and follow us on our journey go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button hit the notifications icon and until next time, keep kicking up dust.